Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Houdini tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create these organic sort of looking displacements uh, using um, either randomized noise or predefined textures. Um, and these are based on something that Lee Griggs did for Maya um, using XGen uh, several years ago now, um, which I always thought looked really cool. It's really easy to do in Houdini though, and so I'll take you through that now. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just drop down a geo node and we'll dive in there. Then we'll start by creating a grid. This is going to be um, what our points are generated from. So we're going to switch this to points and um, we're going to increase the rows to be quite high. I'm going to make it 500 by 500. So we've got a lot of points there and I'm going to keep the size at 10 by 10. We could use our size to drive the number of rows and columns if you want, um, which is obviously the amount of points that you've got. 500 is going to give you 250,000 points. So we're getting up there in sort of polygons. So just bear that in mind. This is low enough for my computer to be able to handle and my computer is sort of getting on in a hinge. It's probably about due for an upgrade soon. So now this number is also going to be, uh, is going to also impact the size of the geometry that we're um, copying to the points. So we'll bear that in mind. Um, and that's also relative to the grid's size. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to just copy to points, which you may have expected. And we're just going to copy a box. You can use any geometry that you like. Um, a box is a nice simple one to start off with though. And because it's only got um, six sides, it's pretty low poly, obviously. And once it's copied to the points, we're going to pack that geometry as well. All right, so when the um, points are copied, you'll get something that looks like this, and that's very heavy, and also the size is wrong. We want to keep the Y height the same size that it is, but we're going to make these sort of skinny. And for this, uh, at 500 by 500, and the 10 by 10 grid, it needs to be 0 0.025. Uh, sorry, uh, so the box should be 0 0.02 by 0 0.02, not 025. And then we'll get boxes that line up perfectly like that. Okay, so now to control the um, heights of these cubes, what we're going to do is create a point fob and we're going to drop it in here and the group type is points and run over points and we'll dive into the points mop and what we're going to do is for this example we'll just create some noise to start with so I'm just going to use unified noise and we're going to run the position into the position and then we also want to run the noise into the CD, the color, um, because we're going to use the color to drive the height to begin with. And um, I'm going to change this unified noise uh, to be 0.05 in the frequency. And I'm going to use a wall EF2 minus F1. Actually, I think that frequency needs to be, uh, I'm going to change the frequency to be uh, two in each channel. And I'm just going to make some slight adjustments. Don't worry too much about how I got to those values. It's just something I was playing with earlier and um, I liked the look of. So, all right, so that should give us a nice variation in height. So all the dark areas are going to be low and all the white or light areas are going to be high. So the values of zero, low values of um, one, white, high. So we need a, um, uh, we need a bind export. And so we can tell it where to go and this is going to be going to the scale and we're also going to use a transform node and run the noise into the transform and the transform into the bind um, export. So now we can call on that attribute that we've just created which is called scale uh, in a vex function. So we'll just create an attribute wrangle Plug that in there and basically we're going to grab the scale on the X and we're just going to keep that at a value of one and at scale on the Y and that is going to be um, at C capital C lowercase D. So it's going to look at the color and that's going to determine the height of the Y and while well, the value it's going to look at the value of the color the channel and um, determine the height of the Y. And then at scale.z is also going to be one. Obviously, you could change those to be something different if you wished. Um, but and it's asking me to make it implicit, but I actually found it, that it worked better if it wasn't. Um, so we'll have a look at the copy to points of the pack. 
So you get something that looks like that, which is pretty cool. So you get a lot of little tiny points. And then if you wanted to adjust the Y scale, you could do it here um, with say times 10, and then you get obviously more extreme. Um, it's scaling it on the Y, but it's scaling it from the center of the box. And we want to change that center point um, to be 0.5, and then it'll give it, it will adjust the height from the bottom. And 10 is pretty crazy, so we could just make it like two, for example. And you get some more extreme height differentiation, which is cool, but we can make it a little bit more controllable if we jump back into our point vop and then we adjust our uh, luminance. So, and because our luminance is driving the height, we can create a luminance um, node here and run the noise into that and then create a ramp uh, parameter and the ramp we'll just call it luminance ramp and this is actually going to be a float run the input into the input and the luminance into the CD now it makes everything um, a value of zero and that's if we jump up a level you'll see that the lamp uh, the ramp is um, zeroed out so at position two we just need to give it a higher value so now you can see that the we can control the highest value say we could flatten out the top by bringing this point here up so by changing our points to be constants rather than um, splines or or linear um, you can get different effects on how the points are distributed um, now one thing actually that's good to do is the boxes um, they have a, a bottom so you could actually bring the lowest value up by a touch just so you don't get that weird artifacting um, you could also go in and select the bottom face and delete it like that and then if you have values of zero the face the, the top face isn't going to sort of uh, intersect with the bottom faces obviously because there is no bottom face you get that sort of effect with a randomized noise which is fine but we could also use a um, image to define the look of it so what we'll do is we'll place in an attribute from that and we'll just place it after the grid all right so we get a texture map here and then we can load a texture any texture you like um, so I think I've got some pre-loaded Houdini ones. So what I'll do is I'll jump down to the, this is gonna be the height. So I've actually got a wood texture here, which has got a height map. So if you've got something with a height map, that's really good. You can still use just a regular RGB texture, but the height map, um, because it's values between zero and one, um, it works quite well. And then because this uh, attribute wrangle is looking at the CD, we just want to make sure that the export attribute is a CD, which it is. And then we'll go into our point vop and we'll just run the CD value from here into our RGB luminance. So we can still control the um, height with our ramp. So I'll just make that a linear uh, line again. And we'll jump into our copy to point uh, after the pack. So there you see we've got that sort of effect and then you can go in obviously and like you did before change your heights so you get this sort of I can't remember whether it's a death valley that has these sorts of hills uh, in the US um, I'm not quite sure somewhere in Arizona you get that sort of looking thing and then we can still go in and actually assign a texture to this and render it with the texture color rather than with the um, just you know boring zero to um, one channel so we'll just grab another attribute uh, from map and we'll place it after our attribute wrangle so then obviously you've got these random textures here which you could use if you want or we can just load in the color map from that wood so you get this effect so now if we want to render that I'm going to use redshift in this example but you can use whichever renderer you want uh, we'll create a render vop, uh, rop and we'll link that to our ROP and just going to make sure GI is on so it looks a bit nicer. 
we will create a light, we will create a camera, and then we just need to create some materials. So I'm just going to create a material network, dive in there, and we'll get a redshift material builder. We'll assign that to our cubes. And then to read the color data, we just need an RS color, uh, user color data, color user data. That seems backwards to me, or every time I read it. Um, and we'll just change the attribute to CD. So it's going to read that color. And then if we go to Redshift, we'll just quickly save this. All right, so we'll run the render and you get this sort of effect. Um, I think I find that it's better with your, with a dome light in there. All right, so just a tinted dome light in there and then just uh, adjust the reflection of the, um, of the cubes. And it looks like the cubes might need normals actually. So we'll just quickly chuck some normals on there. Um, we'll just put it after the pack. That's better. And the final thing you might want to do is if you're kind of looking at this like a macro sort of bit of photography, um, what we'll do is we'll put some depth of field on our camera. So we'll just enable that there. All right, so as you can see with the depth of field, it makes a huge difference to the overall appearance um, of your image. And then you just want to uh, change the um, f-stop there uh, 5.6 looks okay for this one you could blow it out if you want the um the lower your f-stop um the less is going to be in focus and it gives it that more macro photography feel if you're looking to sort of um emulate that sort of style of thing but yeah that's pretty much all there is to it it's a fairly simple setup like i said um, there are actually a couple of different ways of doing this that i've found when i was doing a bit of research but this is the way that i thought was pretty much the most straightforward um to show on a tutorial so hopefully you liked it um, if you want to download the hip file they'll be available to patrons this month at the five dollar tier so jump in there and grab that and you'll be able to get all the other uh, tutorial files that came out this month in september otherwise thanks to our patrons as usual for uh, helping to support the channel and bring you more tutorials like this one and um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already make sure you do so so you don't miss any of these tutorials that are coming out every single week here on small robot studio help others find the video by liking it and uh, that is pretty much all thank you very much for watching and uh, until next time happy rendering